I felt the need to make this video due to the fact that I don't want to lie to you about any of these characters. And I don't want to say there's misinformation because I do feel that the information is correct. But I don't think the whole truth is being given about these characters. And we're getting a five-star selector in a matter of three hours that should be in our in-game mail uh, when you log in probably right now or in case this video is coming out too late. Oh, there's a red bubble. I got to get that shit later. How the f*** did I not see that? Jesus Christ. Uh, I've been going really hard on uh, Wuthering Waves. I have about 70 hours in the game so far. We're on day four, and I've barely slept with how much I'm playing this game. And just in case you're confused on who you want to pick for your convene, I kind of want to weigh in and let you know about all of the characters and why you should pick each one. Okay, so first of all, I want to correct some misinformation about Encore. So Encore does a absolute ludicrous amount of damage when you use her. And a lot of people were saying that one of her downsides is, is that when you go to use her charged attack, which takes a pretty long time, that she's very vulnerable to damage. This is not true. Now, when they presented that information, it was true. However, now that we know about swap canceling and swap backing, you can negate her entire downside. So generally what happens is Encore does an ability that takes about three seconds of cast time. And when that happens, you're very vulnerable to damage. But what you do is you queue it. And once it's queued, it has to happen. So you queue it, swap to another character, Encore stays on the field, becomes invulnerable, does the move, and then you can swap back to her. So thusly, her biggest downside has been negated. So if you like Encore, she does a shit ton of damage. I will say she is very hard to parry with because you pretty much have to plunge attack in order to parry mobs when they come to hit you. But other than that, she does a shit ton of damage. She's really fun and she's also absolutely adorable. She's a very solid pick if you want to use her. I know a lot of people are saying that Gion and Calcharo are the only choices for DPS. That's not true. Encore is still very good. All right, let's go to Ling Yang. Ling Yang is the worst five star on this banner. That's absolutely true. But the thing about Lin Yang is if you use him, it is very impossible to not have fun. He plays in a way that nobody else plays. He really focuses on aerial attacks and he bounces from side of the room to side of the room. And I promise you, if you do want a character that's fun, I think Ling Yang is the funnest character in the game. So if you don't really care about pushing a lot of damage, if you don't really care a lot about meta, if you really just want to fly around and just, you know, just kind of goof off and just beat shit up and looking cool while you're at the same time, just, just pick Ling Yang. Very fun. He, he is the, I picked this character because I want to have fun character. But once again, if you don't like the way he looks, if you don't like the way he plays, and you can always wait to use your selector, um, Ling Yang has a quest where you actually get to demo him. And if the play style he exudes is one that you enjoy, I recommend picking him. Uh, but he is by no means a meta pick. He is by no means a overwhelmingly overpowered unit, but he is a very fun character. And I do think for what he does, he does it very well. And I think he will present a play style that a lot of people will like. All right, Verena is really fucking overpowered. That being said, I am worried about her overall state uh, of being power crept, but she'll have to be power crept not once, not twice, but th not three times. She'll have to be power crept four times until you no longer use her again, due to the fact that you need three characters for a lot of the game modes in this. So she would have to be power crept three times. That's why I'm not really worried about power crept directly in this game, because it's going to take so long to fully get a character out of your rotation, because Verena is good on pretty much any team comp. She heals, she buffs, she's very, very, very strong. Her damage really isn't that great, but it doesn't matter, because she gives your team a universal attack buff, and she also gives your team a universal damage buff. Uh, so Verena really is the win more character. However, you have to understand that when you pick a support, you need to have a main damage dealer in order to have her be a facet in order to buff those characters. So if you don't have a good damage dealer that you like to use, I don't recommend getting her. But if you do have a Gion, if you do have a Calchar already, then I recommend you pick a Verena. But you, you, you really, like, like for example, you wouldn't use a gun without bullets, right? You, you, you wouldn't use bullets without a gun, right? You need them both, right? So Verena is the, you already have this, now I get to make it stronger. Okay, so that's why you would pick a Verena if you already have an established DPS and you want to make them even stronger with Verena. Uh, some great damage dealers, in my opinion, are the Havoc, 
main character. Dan Jin is an amazing damage character, and Cal Charo is an amazing character. We are now going to talk about what I consider to be the greatest unit in the entire game. Yes, even better than Gion. Cal Charo is the coolest character in the fucking game. He's the funnest character, and in my mind and in my soul, he is the best character. Here is why. Number one, he looks like Sephiroth from Final Fantasy VII. Number two, he has Star Platinum from JoJo's Part 3. Number three... He has Virgil Slice and Dice move from Devil May Cry 5. He's the fucking coolest. He has very cool tech as well. You get to chip damage by slash E, slash E, slash E to get more chip damage. Once you get your heavy attack, you cue your heavy attack at three charges. You swap to your support. Whether that's more Teffy or whether it's in the future when you get Yin Lin, do their burst swap back to Cal Charo before his heavy attack is done and you stack even more damage on top of it. He is so fucking good, and even more, he's satisfying to play. He's cool as fuck for voice lines. He, he, he's just fun. He's awesome. He's the coolest fuck. He's the coolest fucking character ever. He's the coolest fucking character. And you can say, you can say that he's not as strong as Gion. You can say that. However, however, when 1.0 Part 2 comes out, and we get Yin Lin, and Yin Lin buffs Cal Charo's effectiveness by 45%, in case you don't know what that means. She buffs all lightning damage by 20%, and then she buffs all alt damage by 25%, which means if you use Yin Lin with your outro skill, your ultimate is effectively going to be doing 20 or 45% more damage when you all, which is insane. So Cal Charo is going to age like a fine wine. If you plan on pulling for Yin Lin, Get a Calcharo. Okay? Yin Lin's support. Yin Lin is a sub DP, a sub DPS. Okay? If you plan... Hold up, what is this? This is going to age like milk. No. That's just not true. That's not the math, though. Okay, well, here you go. I'll just, okay, 20 plus 25% normally equals 45. But I'm sure the way that it works is like this, where it's like 30 times 0.2 equals 6. So... And th uh, 36, then that's times 0.25, and that's 9, so it's 45, right? So maybe it's that way. Who the fuck knows how the math goes, right? But it's plus 20%, and then it's plus 25%, okay? That's how the fucking numbers go. Ma maybe there's a different way to use it, but all I know is you read plus 20%, you read plus 25%, he's going to be doing a lot more damage to the end one. Okay, it's great. Yinglin is an off-field damage, has great buffs. She is incredible, especially for Cal Charo. Cal Charo practically must have her because of his play style. Absolutely. fucking lootly Okay, great sub DPS damage. Great buffer. Incredible. John Zen. I think this character feels very clunky, but with the recent changes, she is most likely the most well-rounded character at pretty much doing everything. She can do a little bit of DPS. She can do a little bit of healing. She can do a little bit of shielding. Her play style is a little bit clunky, but other than that... She's a very solid pick. She also groups mods up, mobs up. She pretty much does it all. So if you want a well-rounder, go Jian Jing. If you plan on pulling Yin Lin or need a new main DPS, go Calcharo. If you want a good support, pick Verena. If you want to have fun, pick Ling Yang. If you want to pick Encore because she's cute and you want to do some swap cancels and have a more challenging time to play, but a more rewarding one, go Encore. That is what I would recommend. Yeah. If you plan on pulling Yin Lin, get Calcharo. This is six weeks in advance. I doubt that Calcharo and Yin Lin can get power crept for the foreseeable future. And I feel like that team is going to be solid for a very long time, right? It may not be the best team, but you can still use it as a team for a very long time. Because you would need to get power crept not once, not twice, not three times. It would have to be power crept four times. Because you need three different teams. And Calcharo and Yin Lin should be usable for a very long time. If at not your first, not even your second... Could be even as your third. That's why I'm really not worried as power crept. But I feel like Calcharo Yellen is going to be fantastic. Unless there's leakers, unless there's somebody knows something that I don't know, I feel it's going to be great. And if anything, it'll still be very fun to play because I promise you, Calcharo's play style. I mean, you really just don't get anything better than that, bro. It's just so fucking cool, bro. Oh my God, I love it. Anyways, I just want to put that disclaimer out. If anybody needs help figuring out who the fucking five star is, go to my Twitch.tv for this down. Love you. Appreciate you. Peace.